Don't fret, boyo. I'll be gentle. <laughs> So, let's get the ball rolling here. And before I start the tier list, we have cases again. I feel like this is going to be the this is going to be the routine. I open a few cases, it gets myself warmed up. Also, yes, I have figured out the chat replay. So, hey, look, there you guys are. All right, let's open these up. Uh my guess is it's going to be a battle scarred lightning rod shotgun. Oh, that's factory new. What? Factory new unusual. I'll take it. All right, but that's not why we're here. The reason why we're here is this. Tier list number two. Who's it going to be? Also, yeah, don't unbox. Don't, don't, listen. What you've just experienced was extremely lucky. A statistical anomaly, all right? You could open hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of cases and never get an unusual. Many people do that, and they never get shit. Don't open cases. Don't do it. What you didn't see are the number of cases I've opened and got jack shit. Unless you watch me frequently, then you know. We ready? Who's it gonna be? Oh, it's so loud. Who's it gonna be? Who's on the chopping block next? Oh, it's the demo man! All right. This is gonna be a really long stream because the demo man has a fuckload of items. We're gonna be here a while. All right, guys, I'm gonna let you pick the first one. Caber, 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 caber. Okay, we have we have an overwhelming number of cabers, so we're gonna do the caber first. Briefly reviewing the tier list here, we have what's my S tier, which is an item that is so good that it needs to be nerfed or reworked in some capacity. A, B, C, D, E. And then a weapon that is so bad, either because it's buggy or it's just absolute dog shit, that it needs, or, and, and that it, like, it just doesn't work, then it needs to be, you know, reworked and, and fixed. Ulapul Kaber. So, I'm going to lament about the previous version of this item for a while. The previous version of this weapon was perfectly fine. It was just a stupid gimmick item that you could just whip out and fucking smack someone upside the head. It was, it's, I think it's, it's fucking mechanic is more balanced than a random crit because it's just a one-off deal and then you can't use it again. Then you're, then you're just stuck with something that does little to no damage. And you know, you, you whip it out as like a fucking last or like, fuck it, I'm gonna die anyway. I'm gonna take someone with me. That's when you use the caber. Unless you're just being a complete dummy and going around with like the sticky jumper or, you know, sticky jumping around and just landing on top of people's heads and one shotting light classes left and right. That's what the old version of this weapon was for. It was never this fully competent battle weapon compared to even like the stock bottle. The old caber had always been a silly, fun gimmick item, right? Unfortunately, Valve decided to nerf the fuck out of it. Not only did they reduce its damage so it can never one-shot light classes, except if you're crouching, which for some reason when you crouch, more of the explosion hits a player's hitbox, dealing more damage, and then it can kill a light class in one shot, and they gave it a stupid fucking deploys time. A longer deploy penalty. It's just... Why? Why? By the time you have it out, you're already fucking dead. Because the only time you're gonna be using this thing is when you're already gonna die. You're whipping it out again. It's that last sort item. Fuck it. I'm gonna take them with me. But then you can't even get it out in time. And then you just fucking die. So now it's been like the caber has been pushed so far into meme territory. It's hideously useless unless you're using it with a shield that can grant you a crit. And then you can charge at someone and then hit them with a crit caber and then you can get a one shot kill that way and maybe get, you know, take down a few other people around you. But beyond that, the damage on this thing is so low, it deploys so slow, and it has a swing speed penalty. So like if you miss your first swing, you're even more like if you met like if you manage to get the caber out and you fuck your first swing, you're even more screwed. Because you now you have to wait even longer between you can get off another swing and you're gonna die anyway. Oh why do they fucking nerf it this way? It sucks. Yeah, why kill yourself? with 124 damage on somebody, when you can crit someone and not take any self damage at all with a pan or a bottle or any other melee that does a random crit and not take any self damage yourself. And you have multiple chances of it being a random crit and killing somebody in one shot. Ooh. 
The caver is kind of annoying to deal with, but not a threat most of the time. Yeah, it was it was a little silly, like, oh shit, this demo man's walking at me. I better not get close to him, and then he fucking pops you on the head. With all of demo man's weapons, they're all effective at medium to close range, and if he gets off anything at close range, he takes self-damage. That this melee item was was balanced in the same way as all of his other weapons. Insane risk versus reward with this item. And now they just made it all risk, no reward. If I had to fix it, remove the stupid deploy speed penalty and remove the stupid swing speed penalty. I don't know if I can create a proper argument for increasing its damage because a lot of people get hissy and pissy about why is he able to one-shot kill somebody? He can already do that with sticky bombs or a random crit with a pan, so... I don't know. And something else I would do is if we weren't going to adjust the damage on it, let it recharge. Like, let it recharge every 20 or 30 seconds. Any combination of removing the swing speed penalty, the, the, the deploy speed penalty, or giving it a recharge. Do any one of those three things and it's already infinitely better. And it still comfortably resides in its little silly gimmick weapon area. We have the current version, which is just, it's down here. Also, yes, make it taunt kill. The taunt kill is designed, to, it looks like it's a taunt kill. But when you do the taunt, nothing happens. Thank you for bringing that up. Totally forgot about that. Fucking God, man. You could throw it with secondary fire. I don't know if I like that. I think giving the demo man a third ranged explosive option to pair with his other two very powerful ranged explosive options would be a little too strong. Let's move on. I'm gonna talk about my favorite demo man weapon. I'm gonna talk about the lock and load. Oh, Zesty, why are you putting the lock and load at eight? Why, why are you putting the lock and load eight here? You have you have four shots with the with the iron bomber. You have four shots with the with the grenade launcher, they do more explosive damage. They they have four shots. They have rollers. And uh, uh, why why you put the lock and load in eight here? You can't do that. The lock and load is a crutch, and you can't have fun with this item. It's too. It makes demo man too easy. You will only use the lock and load to kill sentries. You will only use the lock and load to harass engineers. You will only use the lock and load to pick off targets from a distance. You will not have fun. You will use the iron bomber. Fuck you. I love this item. The old version of this item was pretty busted. So the very first version of this item had only two shots and no damage penalty on it. And back when the game had random damage variants, you could one shot light classes with it. That was fucking broken. And then for some reason, it still had the damage bonus of 20%, right? But it had random damage variants on, but they capped the damage to 124. So you had three shots of something up to 124 that you could just chuck everywhere, man, that was busted. That was really fucking good. I think a lot of people are probably traumatized about the older versions of this item, and they still call the lock and load a crutch now because they're being reminded of the older versions of this item that were hideously overpowered. Then they nerfed it. They removed the 20% damage bonus on it, and then they only made that 20% damage bonus, bonus affect buildings, and they kept the same blast radius penalty on it, and that's it. And now I think it's fine. Here's why. The faster projectile speed is awesome. The faster projectile speed, slightly shallower arc, makes it really fucking good to pick off targets at a distance, right? It makes the demo man play a little bit more passively in that he can, you know, engage targets from further away. But the faster projectile speed also makes it a little bit easier to hit targets up close. And in exchange for that increased range and the slightly easier pills to hit, smaller blast radius, only three shots, no rollers, lower crowd control. I think that is the perfect way to balance this item. I love this thing. I use it almost all the time. It's it's my it's my main go-to primary for demo man. It's so much fun. And yeah, it's very good for practicing landing direct hits with it. I heard the lock and load ruins your aim. Any weapon that deviates from stock weapon projectile speed does fuck with your aim a little bit, but you can easily make up for it with just practice. Now, the more you use the item, you're going to get accustomed to it and you can usually flip back and forth between the two with enough time fairly easily. Ah, uh, yes, area denial. Lock and load's not good at area denial, but it's very good at single target fights. And also, you know, if you actually manage to get it into a crowd of people, 25% blast radius penalty isn't that detrimental. You can still do a decent amount of splash. Lock and load's great. I'm putting it in A tier. Fuck you. You can't convince me otherwise. 
and people still consider it a crutch because it has a faster projectile speed, I call that bullshit. Sticky jumper, sticky jumper, sticky jumper. Okay, let's do sticky jumper. Sticky jumper's A tier because a highly mobile demo man with well-placed pipes is fucking scary. If you have a if you have a guy who is seasoned enough with sticky jumping and he can land pipes, the sticky jumper is a fucking amazing item to use. It is so oh man, yeah, it's fun. Jumper equals fun. It is so awesome to just do crazy fucking jumps across the map with this thing and land pipes, just land on people's heads and fucking unload grenades on them. Oh man. You can do some crazy shit with the sticky jumper. The fun factor with this item, the fact you can pair it with any grenade launcher and go fucking crazy with it, or Amelia does random crits, it this item is just it's just super fun. It yeah, uh, it, it it makes you play Demo Man completely differently. I would say the Demo Man probably has the widest range of play styles out of any of the classes. The movement on the sticky jumper is pretty much next to none the movement and distance you can get with this thing with no damage to yourself especially if you know how to like land a sticky before you land and detonate it so you take no fall damage this thing is insanely good for mobility this is very much a skill based weapon you got to put a lot of time into practicing your jumps you got to put a lot of time into practicing your grenade shots if you can do both those things it, it, it's it's good oh yeah i totally forgot about the old version of this item do you guys remember the old version of the sticky jumper where you can have all eight stickies out at once. I want that back. Can we have that back, please? I love the old version where you just fucking send yourself flat across the map at Mach 9. <laughs> Vomit six stickies on the ground and just fucking chuck yourself into the enemy team. Oh my god, that was so fun. I, I completely understand why they nerfed it, because it basically made you completely unstoppable once you were airborne. You just you were moving so fast you couldn't be hit. Yeah. The old sticky jumper was a little was a little wacky, a little busted. Let's move on. Let's talk about, someone mentioned the pain train. I'm willing to talk about the pain train. Pain train is actually a lot better than people seem to think. It only has a 10% damage penalty. Think about what a 10% damage penalty on bullets, sorry, 10% bullet damage penalty at anything other than roughly point blank range, especially on scatter guns and shotguns, a 10% damage penalty isn't gonna do that much. Base damage on a shotgun is only 60 damage. So that's only 66 damage at medium range, assuming all pellets hit. The only time where that 10% damage penalty makes a significant difference is at close range, because every hit scan weapon in this game, aside from sniper rifles, has damage fall off and random bullet spread. And also sentry guns exist. Thank you for reminding me of that. Am I saying this weapon is better than other demo man melees? No, but I'm saying it's not nearly as bad as people make it out to be there's no point in using it if defending it. well yeah you're not going to use this if you don't have a point to cap right you're not going to equip this if you're defending on payload king of the hill 5 cp uh offense on attack defend offense on payload that's when you use this thing if your defense on attack defend if your defense on payload then you're never going to touch this weapon because there's no point using it there's no point to cap and personally i think it's i think it's fine I don't think it needs a change. Just because it's not as good as Demo Man's other melee options, that doesn't mean it needs a buff. It has its use, it has its purpose, it has its, you know, its, its little niche area that people can use it in. It's a tool, right? Yeah, it, it's fine for being situational. It doesn't need some epic rework to make it as viable as the other, uh, as the other Demo Man melees. Ah, yes, how could I forget? Fucking medieval mode. There is no bullet damage in medieval mode. So you can just use this and have an automatic advantage over everybody. In the context of sixes or Highlander, pain trained is an A tier weapon. Is it though? Because you're playing sixes, you're having to deal with two scouts. Two scouts being controlled by two players that have poured thousands of hours into the game. Is it even allowed in sixes? It is allowed in sixes. Well, again, I can see why, because Scout is the most influential class in sixes, aside from Medic, that uh, it makes perfect sense that it's allowed, because it would, just it would allow them to melt through the team's anchor more quickly. I can see why they would allow it, because it just makes Scout even more powerful in sixes, because that's what they like in their meta, baby! Let's move on, shall we? Something new. Well, let's get something that's kind of pointless to talk about out of the way. I'm gonna put booties up here, because... So, booties. Let's do booties, because there's not much to say about them. You're you're only going to be using the booties if you're playing full demo night or if you're using the booties with a sticky bomb launcher and you're only using a sticky bomb launcher unless you're doing demo pan or you're doing a meme with a sticky jumper or, or what have you they give you the health bonus they give you the the movement speed bonus if you have a shield equipped you're just good that's it i get there's not much to be said about using the booties with a sticky bomb launcher because yeah 
it, the sticky bomb launcher is basically another primary for demo man if you only want to focus on using sticky bombs then you can do that it kind of forces you to get practiced with them and you know knowing how to place them and knowing how to time your detonations and whatnot but beyond that i feel like it just makes you an even slower demo man because you're sacrificing your primary weapon that's really good when you combo with sticky bombs the best way to play demo is comboing sticky bombs and grenades you know you do that you get good at that with demo you're fucking unstoppable it's comboing the damage between sticky bombs and pipes yeah you can focus on doing traps and it, i guess it's a different way to play but i feel like if you want to be fully effective eh, it, it's just it's just, eh. let's do the base jumper base jumper is <laughs> base jumper base jumper has one use and it's to get the jump on a sentry nest while you're in the air and if you can get up there with a sticky bomb launcher and no one sees you yeah you can rain sticky bombs down onto people right but ever since they nerfed it to where you can't you know undeploy and redeploy at will you're just a sitting duck in the air and anyone can just shoot you at any time and you fucking die i fucking hate that they nerfed this thing this thing was never meant to be used in any serious capacity because of people who take this game overly seriously oh i can't shoot people in the air because they they, they will they go around too fast. They they sacrifice their main damage dealer, and I can't I can't hit them anymore. Uh, it's scary in six v six because I can't shoot the guy in the air no more. Uh, they fucking nerf the shit out of it. No one uses this anymore. No one uses this item even as a joke. If you want to have airborne mobility, you're just gonna use the sticky jumper and like a grenade launcher or booties. Even the memers don't want to use this thing. You know, actually, I'm putting it down here. Fix it. Do something with it because no one wants to use it. It sucks, especially on demo man soldier. You could argue it has some viability, but Demo Man, there's no use for it. Aside from that one instance, we are trying to get the jump on a fucking sentry nest by getting way up in the fucking air and hoping nobody sees you. Otherwise, this thing sucks dick. No one uses it. If it was Lazy Purple, he, he put out a video where there was a Demo Man using the sticky jumper or the, the base jumper with the sticky bomb launcher to rain down on a sentry nest on swift water, right? And now everyone fucking does that. Put it back to its former glory that's when this thing was used that's when this thing was fun and now it's dog shit the only people that complained were people that take the game way too fucking seriously you know what the, the, the beautiful thing about this too is that there was nothing wrong with before because you want to know the counter for this thing hit scan play heavy play scout play sniper run a sentry anyone using the base jumper gets fucked by hit scan because it kills your airborne momentum and sends you flying in the opposite direction but no i can't land my air shot on it anymore because it, he's he's too far in the air or all and also my favorite one that i saw competitive players bitching and moaning about the reason why it was banned in competitive 6v6 is because it allowed demo men and soldiers to hang in the air for so long that scouts couldn't get to them. Scouts couldn't deal enough damage to the soldiers and demo men that were using the base jumper while they were hanging in the air. And so like, oh, this thing needs to be nerfed because scout isn't viable anymore. Scout isn't good anymore in sixes when you have the parachute. And then guess what happened? They fucking nerfed it. Fuck, fuck the meet your match update. Fuck it ruined so many good items and the stuff that came after. Ruined so many good fucking items. It, it, fuck, it was fine. It was so much fun. And because scouts can't shoot the demo man or the soldier. Boo hoo, fuck you. you were gonna, it was gonna be banned anyway. They, they, they ban, they ban the items anyway. They don't let them use it anyway. They don't let people touch them. So then what was the point of whining about it and then having it changed? You understand? <laughs> The lighting in here is absolutely terrible, and I am very sorry. This video is sponsored by, again, no one, because you're watching my face, the guy that doesn't really ever get sponsorship requests unless it's from really weird shit. And this week's weird email comes from Peartex Company. Hi, I'm Blue from Peartex Company. We are a company dedicated to promote brands around the world by making promotion videos. We do like your YouTube channel. It looks awesome. And we would like to whether you have any interest in our new promotional activity. The game is called Idol Angel. We're apparently we're talking about a game now not a promotional video for something okay and the promotional video will be about 30 minutes long they want me to make a 30 minute long video about a game called idle angels the fuck is this game all about oh well this is uh this is looking like my kind of game i must say no don't it's it's probably it, this, this is like another weird stupid gotcha game that's probably got a lot of porn i uh, no, don't do it so you see what i have to work with here so if you like what i do and want to support my content then i highly encourage you to just watch the video or leave a like or if you want to tear me a new asshole because you don't like something i said in this video about a video game or weapon or something 
then just, uh, you know, have a rage fest on that keyboard and smack your head against it for a little while and let me know what upset you. Beyond that, if you really want to go the extra mile and support me with some good old dosh, then head on over to my Patreon. Patrons get full access to the entire unedited streams from these tier lists, and if you want to pay a little bit more, you get access to my Discord. So yeah, thank you for watching, and any and all support is immensely appreciated. Let's keep going with this tier list. Yeah, I'm gonna go beat off to Idol angels porn now see y'all later <laughs> that's that that's how you do it that's how you end it uh stock bottle uh yeah it's it's good stock melee on demo man makes perfect sense when you're playing just full stock demo because any of his other melees are only good when you're playing hybrid knight or demo knight unless you're using the scotsman skull cutter you could maybe make an argument for the half satoichi but just normal vanilla normal melee is probably the best on demo and maybe sniper or pain train if you're wanting to use the pain train but pain train i usually tend to find to be most useful on hybrid night because if you're suddenly engaged in a fight with hit scan you can bail out stock bottle is really good but it's not like it's amazing it's not a tier it's just the best melee to use on demo man if you're running you know a sticky bomb launcher and a grenade launcher next to the scotsman skull cutter which i guess i can do next let's do the scotsman skull cutter Remove random crits on this thing, then it's fine. This weapon should not deal random crits. Other than that, it's fine. That's it. Because when you use the Scotsman Skull Cutter with the Tide Turner, and you have random crits in a Valve server, you don't fucking die. Because you just get crit, after you get kill after kill after kill, you immediately recharge your shield, and then you can do another charge again. You can chain charges with the Scotsman Skull Cutter and the Tide Turner, and then any primary. You can use booties, you can use a, you can use a grenade launcher, and you can just chain shit over and over and over again. It's fucking crazy. Any other shield? Not quite. No weapon should be balanced with random crits in mind. And when the game doesn't have random crits on, it's totally fine. But if you're in a server with random crits on, it's fucking broken. Nerf it. Remove random crits. That's it. Yeah, exactly. You crit based on how much damage you've done within the past you know, certain amount of time. So if you're, if you've just been chaining kills with this thing, you're just going to keep getting more crits. How would I rebalance random crits without removing them? I wouldn't do that. Random crits completely gone or not gone at all. There is no good middle ground for the existence of random crits in a game like this. That is my firm belief. Personally, I don't mind random crits that much. I like, I actually enjoy playing on servers with random crits more than I do without. It spices things up. That's why I like random crits. Are they fun, fair, and balanced? Depends if you're on the receiving end or not. The only middle ground that I can see, and this is from experience, I like playing on servers with random crits on, but they have a random crit cap. Like the more damage you do, it does not increase your chances of getting a random crit. Just so they are inherently random and are not dependent on the amount of damage you've just dealt. Because the way random crits work right now, if you've just dealt a fuckload of damage, then you know, oh hey, chances are I'm gonna get a one-shot kill with my melee. I'm gonna go for it. And then you likely will. That's just my opinion. You don't have to agree with it. You can love random crits all you want you can hate random crits all you want that's just what that's just what i think that's what that's 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 my take on it i don't care either way if random crits are removed or stay in the game i'm fairly neutral on it you know because when i get a random crit it's fun for me when i get randomly critted it's bullshit so it balances it out remove random spread uh no i don't think it's that big of a deal to have random bullet spread turned off on only shotguns my argument for that is that it's a shotgun or a scatter gun you're gonna have random spread of the pellets they're not going to be fixed. That's just me, though. Don't have to agree with me. That's just my opinion. That's what we're here for. Next item. First one I see. Katana. Saw it. First one. Uh, okay, see, look. Now we're getting into the weeds here when we're talking about the Demo Man's other melees because all of his other melees are only good if you're using hybrid knight or full demo knight if you're playing hybrid knight or full demo knight the katana is really fucking good if you're not playing demo knight in any capacity it's like down here so i'm gonna meet in the middle and i'm gonna put it in high b tier it's good on hybrid knight it's good on full demo knight you get 50 percent of your base health back on kill and you can get overhealed with it you can be a pretty scary fucking demo knight with this thing but i think it's a lot more viable on hybrid knight because when you know someone's got low enough health you can charge at them with a katana and you can secure your kill and get your health back. Whereas if you're always running full demo knight and you don't have a primary to use, you don't really have any sort of significant active bonus unless you actually manage to kill someone. Unlike the Islander who gets its passive bonuses 
after you get kills, but they stick around. If you engage in a fight that you know you can win as full demo knight, and you can then you can you can immediately get out, right? You can get out because you have buffed out health, either because you got it all back from the depth from the health you lost engaging in that fight, or you got an overheal because you managed to get the target down before getting away enough of your health to make you not have overheal. You know, it gives you a, a much higher health buffer because you have the shields to pair with it. And then it's not because think about it this way, right? It's not just 50% of your health back. It's 50% of your health back but then you have the multipliers from the damage resistances so that 100 health you get back from full demo knight is actually a lot more so like let's say you have your your 30 percent damage resistance on your shield right so that 100 health you get back is actually 142 health so you have to keep that in mind with the half satoichi you are, you're actually getting a lot more health back than just 50 percent of your base health if you're using a shield let's do let's do the stock grenade launcher i am i am a stock grenade launcher enthusiast it's 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 just oh yeah it's all reliable it's just you you know the damn you know what it's gonna do 100 damage per shot it's got good crowd control it's got its rollers it's got your normal blast radius it has the longer fuse time so you can get longer air time with your pipes and get people at distance it's good for spam good for choke control good it's it's just your all around solid bread and butter item landing pipes with the stock grenade launcher normal shots air shots what have you yep it is dopamine heaven and it's really fucking strong and just like every other explosive weapon for demo man it's balanced out by its longer reload time you miss your shots you're fucked until you reload it's just a, it's just an all-around solid fun good item it's good and then we have the iron bomber which i think is worse than the stock grenade launcher oh zesty but it has a bigger hitbox size so it has to be better than the stock grenade launcher only competitive but the competitive players use it so it has to be better than the stock grenade launcher you will only use the iron bomber you will only have the higher hitbox size you will only have the smaller fuse time you will only have the no rollers you will only use the iron bomber fuck you it's worse than the stock grenade launcher here's why it's slightly easier to hit shots but you sacrifice blast radius with it it's only extremely useful if you're spamming it down a choke point that you know where people are going to go and your rollers stay there but the rollers are just as easy to dodge because oh shit i can't stand there for a couple of seconds i need to back up and they do no damage plus a smaller blast radius means less likely to hit somebody on a roller so you have to think about it this way do you want to sacrifice crowd control and more blast damage in exchange for pipes that are slightly easier to hit if you get good at aiming with pipes it doesn't matter which one you use the stock grenade launcher is always going to do better in terms of damage output because that smaller blast radius means you're always going to do less damage because you're getting less damage out on people who are close to your main target but, but zesty people walk over the rollers more often yeah they do sometimes if you want to get good with demo man use the stock grenade launcher but do i think it's a like a overpowered upgrade to the stock grenade launcher no i don't think so because i notice whenever i'm using the iron bomber it's only good against single targets much like a lock and load it's better at 1v1s because, again, pipes are slightly easier to hit. But if you're facing off against a crowd of people, stock's the way to go. That's just me. That's my preference. You don't have to agree. You don't have to like what I say. That's just me. Here's what I think, though. Change the hitbox sizes on all grenade launchers so they're all the same. I would like that consistency. Also, how could I forget? The Iron Bomber has a shorter fuse time, so you get less distance with your pipes than you do with stock. So you gimp yourself on range when you're using this thing. I find what I'm trying to get at a sentry nest that's far away so I can get it outside of its effective range. My Iron Bomber pipes explode in midair. So not only do you sacrifice crowd control, you sacrifice range on your shots. Stock's better, sorry. Yeah, Iron Bomber poo-poo for anything but choke spam. Very eloquently placed, I must say. Let's, if people are calling for loose cannon, fine. We'll do loose cannon. The loose cannon is the definition of dopamine farm. Getting good at consistently double dunking people. Honestly, it's, it's like, you just, you're, you're just nothing. You're fucking, you're just, you're, you're spraying fucking Jesus goo over fucking everything. You know, you got your fucking baby batter everywhere. Every fucking double donk you get, you're coating the walls and cum. It's so fucking fun. But the journey, the journey of getting there is fucking awful. It's easily one of the sharpest skill curve items in the game. Wow! I have to time my charges. I have to lead my shots appropriately. I have to gauge my distance between each of my targets and manage my charge time all at the same time so I can land double donks. Wow! It takes a lot of fucking work to get good at that. But once you get up here, once you're here, Oh baby, it is so fucking fun. If you can consistently land double donks, you're always gonna do more damage than any other grenade launcher. As a downside to that, you have significantly reduced range. And yes, you're correct. It is very bad against buildings. Oh, of course, how could I forget loose cannon jumping? You can fucking just 
go crazy with loose cannon jumps and send yourself flying halfway across the map. You can combine it with charges, with shields, with a tie turner. Oh, you can do some wacky shit, man. Let's talk about the Quickie Bomb Launcher, shall we? Quickie Bomb Launcher is in a weird spot. I consider this item about as good as the stock Sticky Bomb Launcher, but it forces you to play Demo Man very differently. You can't Sticky Spam with it. And Spam is overall weaker with this item because its base damage is lower unless you charge up your Stickies, which again forces you to play slower to deal comparable amounts of damage as the stock Sticky Bomb Launcher. But if you're playing Demo Man at maximum capacity, and that's when you're comboing sticky bombs with grenades, this is the better choice because getting able to getting that bomb down on the ground and priming it quicker and being able to detonate it and then combo it with a pipe is really fucking strong with the quickie bomb launcher. Also, the faster charge time does, yeah, there, someone said it, someone said it. You can snipe people with it. But this thing, there's a very, there's, there's a hidden little gem with the sticky bomb launcher that I don't think people know. You can one-shot a medic with it. If you fully charge up a sticky and you place it at a medic's feet and you're right next to it or very close to it, you can one-shot a medic. So if you really want to be a menace, you plop one sticky down, you sticky jump in, and as you're flying, you charge up your next shot and right as you land, plop it down, detonate it, you're going to one-shot their medic. In exchange for better comboing ability, faster bursts of damage against people, and better sniping ability with a Kritzkrieg, you sacrifice crowd control with sticky spam and better traps. Hidden gem, not a lot of people use it because normal brain dead sticky spam is just so good that they're never going to want to touch this thing. The difference between this and the stock sticky bomb launcher, you can just turn your brain off and hold down mouse one and mouse two and wipe the enemy team. You can't do that with this. You can be equally as effective and in sometimes better, but you have to think about it. You don't have to worry about comboing sticky bombs with pipes. You don't need to do that with a stock sticky bomb launcher because of how easy normal spam is and how easy it is to shut down a choke point or lock down an area with your sticky bombs. But you can still be very fucking scary, equally as scary as this with comboing your pipes and your sticky bombs. And the only reason why this item isn't treading in on broken needs a nerf territory is because it's slow if you're loaded you're gonna shred you don't have stickies loaded you're fucked takes long time to reload one sticky down ain't gonna do all that much five consecutive ones yeah you're gonna fuck shit up one sticky bomb that you've just reloaded in kind of a desperation move to make sure you don't die after you failed your first four not that effective it's just it's just the best item that demo man has and yeah it's better than the skull cutter but it's 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 just demo man's best weapon because of how versatile it is it's probably the best damage dealing weapon in the game besides Sniper. I agree completely. And to get the last one out of the way, let's do the Scottish Resistance. So Scottish Resistance, I'm going to put it here. Yeah, let's put it. I'm going to put it above the booties. It's good. It's the exact same thing as the Sticky Bomb Launcher, except you can't, you can't spam. This weapon forces the Demo Man to play defensively. Whereas with the stock Sticky Bomb Launcher and a Grenade Launcher, he can swap between defensive and offensive whenever he wants. Scottish Resistance is the defensive item for demo. Area Denial is with this is second to none, except for sentry guns. Traps, fucking amazing with this thing. The problem with Scottish Resistance, and one thing that I, I really want them to change, is I hate how the selective detonation works. It, it has, it's this weird, like, fixed circular optic that you have on your screen that you have to hover over your sticky bombs to detonate. So if you're really close to all of your individual stickies, you can really easily pick out which traps you want to detonate at once or which traps you want to detonate. But if you're really far away and all of your sticky bombs are in your field of view, you you can't easily pick and choose. You have to like move your you have to move your cursor until the edge of that circle is just touching where that trap is that you want to detonate and then you can selectively detonate those sticky bombs. That's the only thing I want them to change, is I want them to tighten that selection ability for your traps. And I also don't like the fact that it automatically detonates sticky bombs underneath your feet without looking at them. That's never been useful. Remove that. If anything, that just trips people up. Like, if they forget that they have sticky bombs underneath them, and they only expect to ever be able to detonate them when they're looking at them, that's gonna fuck people up. Because they suddenly go, fuck, why did I just lose half my health? Oh, I had a sticky bomb underneath me that I forgot that I could detonate without having to look at it. And the reason why they put that there is so you can still sticky jump with it without having to look down. But I don't like it. It's very annoying.
but the item is good. You can still be effective with it. It just makes Demo Man play slower. You're relying more on your traps and more on your crowd control capability, you know, predicting where people are going to go, you know, making sure you're locking down areas where you know enemy players are going to be walking through or pushing through. It's significantly weaker on offense, but if you're playing on defense, on like attack, defend, or on payload, Scottish resistance is really fucking good. Offense on payload, not so much because unless you manage to get out far enough ahead to lock down chokes that the defending team is actually going to come through, then it's good. But you have to overextend in order to do that and play beyond your team. Unlike when you're on defense, you don't have to overextend to make that port to make that aspect of the Scottish resistance useful. So what, what next? Let's talk about the Tide Turner. I'm gonna put the Tide Turner in high C tier. The Tide Turner is okay. It's only good if you're using it in Hybrid Knight and you're wanting to use it for like extreme mobility. But if you're playing full Demo Knight, it's only really good with the with random crits turned on. The 15% resistance against blast damage and fire damage aren't that significant. They don't give you that much of a higher health buffer and you're only getting a mini crit swing in. The mobility is really fucking good. You can pull off crazy shit with it, especially if you're using the clade more. It's a get out, yeah, it's a, it's a get out of jail free card. If you, if you suddenly find yourself at low health, you can just fucking bail out, right? You can more or less do that with any shield anyway, but you can do it really well with the tie turner. But for me, Personally, the upside of getting 75% of your charge back on kill, but not being able to readily secure that kill with a guaranteed crit just makes it the weakest full demo knight option, in my opinion. In terms of hybrid knight, it's very good. If you're only considering this on, on, on hybrid knight, it's probably up here. But because you have to consider full demo knight as well, I have to bump it down a tier. Ah, yes, of course, trimping. How can I forget? Yeah, if you want to do the trimping gimmick where you're flying through the air and not able to shoot anybody as you do that, so you can land behind the enemy team and maybe kill one guy as you sacrifice almost half your health, if not more, to get back there, then yeah, you can do that too. And in terms of survivability, this shield is the weakest. In terms of mobility, really fucking good. So in terms of hybrid knight, the charge and charge is easily the best option. I'm going to put it up here in B tier. What's a hybrid knight doing? He's focusing on landing pipes and on the off chance that he needs to bail out or secure a kill with his melee, you have that charge at your disposal. You're not charging as often as you would with full demo knight, which is where the splendid screen would come in. You're using this to tank damage as hybrid knight. And in that regard, it's really fucking good. Is it the best full demo knight shield? I consider it marginally better than the Tide Turner because the 50% fire resistance and the 30% blast resistance is insanely good, especially with, with, you know, 200 base health. If you have 200 base health, guess what that 200 health turns into when you have a 30% resistance to blast damage. If 285 health, if you have 200 health and you have a 50% fire resistance, you have 400 health against fire when you're using the charge and charge on full demo knight. But it's not the best full demo knight option. The best full demo knight option is the Splendid Screen. Splendid Screen is up here in A tier. Here's why. If you want to play Hybrid Knight, Splendid Screen is also good. You have your 20% resistance to blast and fire, so it's still a decent amount. You have faster charge, you have you have faster charge recharge? Faster charge recharge, faster charge recharge. Interesting way to put that. You have more frequent mobility options. And if you're playing full Demo Knight with this thing, the bonus damage you get with the Islander is broken. It's fucking stupid how broken this is. Islander's up here. I'll explain why in a minute. Splendid Screen with any other Demo Knight sword is insanely good on full Demo Knight. Pair it with the fucking Persian Persuader. The Persian Persuader and the Splendid Screen and the booties is probably the best full Demo Knight loadout unless you're using the Islander because you always have charge. You get charge from ammo. You get charge from swing hits. You get charge from kills. You have faster... You, have, you get charge for days. You never... You're never without charge with Persian Persuader and the Splendid Screen and booties unless you completely fuck up. And the increased shield bash damage makes you better secure kills on higher health classes when you're using the Persian when you're using the Persian persuader but full demo knight with the islander and the splendid screen is hideously broken this shit needs to be nerfed specifically the islander needs to be nerfed not a major nerf just a slight one when you have five heads or is it four four or five heads when you have the maximum amount of heads you run faster than a scout so you're harder to hit you have 235 health which guess what 235 health guess what that turns into oh that's 335 health against blast damage with the charge and charge oh 
What's that against fire? Oh, that's 470 health. And then if you're using the splendid screen, that's 293 health against both blast and fire damage. So effectively roughly 300 health. You have the same amount of health as a heavy moving faster than a scout with crits on demand that can also one shot heavies with the shield bash and the crit swing, or you can just one shot white classes with the shield bash without having to do melee with the maximum amount of heads, it's a bit broken. And the way you nerf it, remove one head on the Islander. Max health 220, max speed slightly slower than a scout, and then we're good. And I was talking about this with Demo Knight as well in my Pyro tier list. A lot of people call for Demo Knight to have some kind of a knockback resistance against Air Blast on Pyro. No, that breaks the class. If you give Demo Knight knockback resistance, he's gonna be fucking unstoppable. Because not only does he have an effective health pool of 300 or more against two damage types, he's not gonna fucking die. The only thing that's gonna be able to stop a Demo Knight is a Sentry Gun or a Heavy that's using the Natasha. Oh my God, I don't understand why the idea that Demo Knight, full Demo Knight should have knockback resistance ever got popular. They, or rather they tested that out in the high GPS balance mod. They tested that shit. It was fucking broken. Demo Knight could not be fucking killed because no one could push him away. Pyro should be the natural counter to two Demo Knight. Everything has its hard and soft counters in this game. Don't, you can't just ask for them to be removed so your special little subclass can be played better, played easier. Do you think you should lower the resistances too? No. If they if they reduce the maximum health pool uh, that the Islander grants down to 220, then it's fine. 235 puts you above 300 with, you know, it, it's it's still it's still pretty fucking high though. I don't know. But the fact that you can't but the fact you're moving slower than a scout with only four heads is a bit better. So I think if they remove one head off the maximum from the Islander, then I think it's in a much better state. Okay, last two. Persian Persuader. Persian Persuader is really fucking good. I would, it's probably up here. I'm putting it up here because it's the second best full Demo Knight option. If you're using the Persian Persuader and you're using any other weapon that's a grenade launcher or a sticky bomb launcher, what's the fucking point? You cannot Hybrid Knight with this thing because you don't have ammo. And I don't really understand why they did that because Hybrid Knight with this was never like a major issue. I actually, I got, the more I think about it, yeah, it was probably better because you had charge pretty much always on demand and it would immediately refill you back up on pipe ammo and you had another charge almost immediately if you got an ammo pack so you just fucking zip away and deal damage with pipes and have damage. Okay, yeah, it's a bit strong. But it's unfortunate that now it's only good on full Demo Knight. They had to add a downside and the downside unfortunately just pushed it into full Demo Knight territory and that's the only place where it can exist now. And that's fine because full Demo Knight Persian Persuader is fucking good. It pairs insanely well with a splendid screen. It also pairs really well with the fucking charge and charge because you can have more resistances and you get charged back faster because you pick up fallen ammo kits and get charged back on swing persian persuader pairs the best with any shield easily it's the most versatile between all three shields hands down because you get charged back so easily with it you don't have to wait as long with either the tide turner or the charge and charge because you get charged back on swing and charged back with ammo or if you get a kill you get charged back with kill with booties and shield it's awesome it's the last one talking about the clade more the clade more is easily my favorite melee for demo man I'm gonna put it on par with the Persian Persuader because where the Persian Persuader is the all around best option for full Demo Knight, unless you're using the Islander, the Claymore is the best sword option if you're playing Hybrid Knight because the mobility that this thing grants with its longer charges is fucking insanely good because you can do two things with it. One, you can bail out with this a lot better than with any other sword because you have a longer charge, you can get more distance with higher speed and get the fuck out. Or if you want to be that guy, you can combine it with the charge and charge for more resistances to offset that 15% damage penalty, or that 15% damage vulnerability, I should say, for a long distance kill with it. And if you're going for those long distance charge charges with this thing to pick off like some unwary sniper or something off, off in a distance, I fucking love doing that. It is so fun to get those super long distance kills with this thing. Yeah, so you have 152 effective health with the Claymore, assuming you don't have a shield. If you have a shield to offset that damage vulnerability, you still have higher than base health with any shield paired with the Claymore. But against bullets, yeah, you only ever have 152 effective health with Hybrid Knight in this thing. But that damage vulnerability is only effective when the sword is active. So you're only pulling this thing out when you need to bail out or when you know you can secure that kill and don't have to worry about and don't have to worry about taking bullet damage, right? It only punishes you when you have it out making use of its upsides. Whereas for this, 
The upside with this is always available regardless of whether or not it's deployed. Therefore, its vulnerability is always active whether or not it's deployed. Except the one thing that bothers me is I really hate how they turned the old stat of minus 15 max health to a 15% damage penalty. If you have the effective health just on your screen, it's a lot easier to understand because now you have to like remember, oh yeah, I suddenly take more damage now, but I don't know how much health I really have. I don't like that. I like it just being a straight maximum health debuff. And that, and I think that was fine. I like that a lot more. So yeah, that that's it, guys. That's pretty much it. I think this is pretty solid. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Another one down.